Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be showing you guys how I do lash extensions on myself at home. And this is actually going to be like one individual lash onto your um, natural lash. And I don't currently have lash extensions on right now, but these clips were filmed I'd say almost a year ago and I never posted the video. I figured right now would be the perfect time since everyone is stuck in quarantine and no one can go and get refills themselves. Um, also, I personally don't want to be the one to recommend anyone to try it at home just because it is really risky. You're going to be working really close to your eye. But obviously, if you want to try it out yourself, hopefully you can learn a few tips from my video on how to safely do it at home. With that being said, I also want to mention that I'm not a professional. I'm not a lash tech. Um, many, many, many years ago, I did buy these similar products and did extensions on my best friend and my sister for fun. Also, if you are a lash tech, please do not come for me. I'm just merely sharing my experience and how I do it at home. But if you have any good advice um, that would help me or others, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. But other than that, I will make sure to link all the items that I use down in the description box below. And yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. This is the lash pack that I picked up. It is the C Curl in 0.15 millimeters. This lash pack comes in a variety of lengths. It starts from 7 millimeter all the way up to 15. And on my eyes, I like to use 8 and 9 in the inner corners and then 10, 11, 12 throughout the rest of my eyes. I also wanted to share these charts which shows different curls, thicknesses, and lengths that are available. Depending on the type of curl that you want, you want to select a curl that is a little bit straighter or one that's a little bit more curlier. And then depending on the condition of your lashes, say if you had really thin lashes, you want to pick a thickness that is a little bit lighter. And then if your lashes are a little bit shorter, you want to go with shorter lengths so that it doesn't weigh down and damage your lashes too much. I also wanted to include this chart which shows you different styles that you can create on your eyes. I usually like to go for more of a natural or a doll eye and knowing the type of style that you want on your lashes is really important so you know which lengths to put on which parts of your eyes. For instance, if you wanted more of a cat eye, you would put the longer lengths towards the ends of your eyes and if you wanted more of an opa eye the longer lengths will go towards the center it's also important when you're doing your lashes to step back here and there to look at your eyes to make sure that they're both even and that you're creating the style that you like for the glue, I picked up something that was good for sensitive eyes and also had low fumes. I also wanted to get a glue that didn't dry too fast just because since I'll be doing it on myself, I might be a little bit slower. I picked up this pack of tweezers from Amazon, I believe, and I only really used the straight and curved tweezers. The straight tweezer was great for isolating my lashes and you definitely don't have to get one that is this sharp. Just get one that is a little bit straighter and that will help you tremendously. And this curved one was perfect for picking up single lashes. I just found that it was really comfortable using this one compared to a regular like brow tweezer. And this was the other tweezer and I think this one is more full volume lashes but I like the other curved tweezer more so I didn't use this one at all. And then I also had this boolie on hand from when I used to get my lashes done, but I'm sure you can get them for free like if you went to Ulta or Sephora. I also had this lash cleanser on hand that my sister-in-law gave me, but you definitely don't need to go out and buy one. You can just use a really mild face wash. This last item is optional, but I find it really important to get, especially if you'll be doing lashes yourself, and that is lash remover. This is just great, especially if you mess up or you just want to go ahead and take your lashes off. I find that it works a lot better than some type of home remedy, which I have tried before and doesn't work as well as lash remover. This is what my lashes look like before the lash refills and it honestly doesn't look too bad because I try not to let my lashes get too bad before refilling them or else it just takes a really long time. You definitely can do a full set yourself but it just takes a really long time so I usually just like to get my lashes professionally done and then do the refills myself. As you can see I just have a couple sparse spots especially in the center and the inner corner so that is where I will be focusing most of my refills. So before refilling, I like to prep my lashes and that just consists of washing them. Like I mentioned, I do have a foam cleanser but if you don't have one, you can just use a really gentle or mild face cleanser. So I just pump one pump onto each of my eye and gently rub the base of my lashes. This just helps to get any residue off of my lashes so I can go ahead and refill them. And 
and how I like to dry my lashes is basically blinking into a towel and just kind of pushing my lashes up I never push down on my lashes and I found that this helps to dry them really easily without too much fallout Another good reason to prep your lashes is because it helps to get all the loose lashes out so you can refill new fresh lashes. Next I like to brush out my lashes with my spoolie and I just brush them normally and I also like to put the spoolie behind my lashes and kind of brush them upwards. This again just helps to take out any lashes that might be loose and also straighten them out so you can get them ready for refilling. So this is what they kind of look like up close. I do have some overgrown lashes and then some sparse areas especially in the middle and inner corners of my eyes. The next step in my process is removing overgrown lashes and this step is optional but I find that removing overgrown lashes and putting on new fresh ones closer to the base of my lashes just makes my lashes look a lot better. So to do this I take one tweezer and pinch the very base of my natural lash and then with the other tweezer I pinch the base of the false lash and gently peel it upwards and I find that this works really well on preserving my natural lashes and this does take some practice so just please be careful if the lash will not remove from your natural lash just leave it alone and try it another time okay now we can get into lash application and what I like to do is take any surface and here I'm just taking the lid of that lash pack and I'm just going to squeeze out the tiniest bit of glue you don't want to squeeze out too much glue because it does dry pretty fast Next, taking my curved tweezer, I'm just going to try to pick up one single lash. I like to pinch the base of the lash and remove that from the lash strip. You don't want to pinch too hard or else you're going to create a crimp in the lash. Next, I dip the base of the lash into the glue and this is what it should look like. It should just have the tiniest bit of glue on the base. Next, I like to take a little bit of tape to tape my eyelid just to lift up my lashes a little bit. And then I also recommend having a really good magnifying mirror to look into so you don't strain your eyes too much. Next, I go in with my straight tweezers and I basically just separate my lashes trying to isolate one single lash. And once I do find that single lash, with my other hand taking the curved tweezer and the lash with the glue, I will place it gently on top of my lash without touching my skin. And once I have placed the false lash on my lash, I kind of like to push it around to the angle that I like. Sometimes I want the lash towards the right more, sometimes towards the left more. And then I just try to keep um, that lash separated from my other lashes so they don't stick together. And here I am just trying to isolate a lash again. The way to do that is keep the ends of your tweezers closed and when you're going through your lashes upwards start to open them a little bit and then once you isolate that lash you can go ahead and apply that false lash. Other tips I have is if you wear contacts put them on they work almost as a barrier to protect your eyes from the fumes from the glue. You can also place a fan in front of your face and this helps to blow the fumes away from your eyes. Also remember to take breaks often, closing your eyes a few seconds between refills since this process can be really straining on the eyes. In this clip, I'm using one side of the straight tweezer and I'm basically using the side of it and combing it through each of my lashes. This just helps to separate them so they don't get glued together. So that is basically how I do my lashes at home. I do find it to be really time consuming but it is really rewarding since it saves me a lot of money. Especially if you guys are watching this during quarantine and you guys need to do your own lash refills at home. Please just be very careful because you are using fumes around your eyes and using sharp tools and stuff. So please be careful and I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let's go ahead and look at the before and afters.
All right, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you guys found it helpful and found it somewhat entertaining to see someone do it themselves. It is definitely possible. It just takes a lot of time and patience. Again, I'll make sure to link everything down below. Also, let me know if you have any questions regarding doing extensions yourself at home. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are new here. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.